What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to Bourbon of the Week. My name is Chris. I'm going to be your host for today, and we have round one of our second annual March Madness Bourbon Bracket Single Barrel Edition. We have Jack Daniels Coy Hill. We have Heaven's Door going head-to-head -head in a blind sample. We have our blacked-out glasses because sometimes you guys get mad when I don't use blacked-out glasses in my blind tastings. We have green, we have green, we have yellow, we have yellow. Mercer's going to come down, pour these up, put the answer key in the middle, and I'm going to pick the winner strictly off of taste. Let's get into it. Hey, what's up? What we got. All right. Hold it up. Put it in there. Ready to go. So here we go. I had to take my sweatshirt off, get a little bit more comfortable because we're about to drink two very high proof bourbons. Heaven's Door coming in at 80, and I didn't realize how many similarities these two bottles had until I actually sat down and thought about it. Heaven's Door, sourced from multiple distilleries. This particular single barrel comes from Tennessee. Jack Daniels also coming from Tennessee. We have 80% corn, 10% rye, 10% malted barley. Jack Daniels is 80% corn, 12% rye, 8% malted barley. Nine-year age statement on this one, I believe. This one is non-age stated, so it's interesting to see how these two will differ. I think the biggest thing that we're going to get out of these is the proof. That being said, we're going to try these out. Did we talk about the proof? 142.8 proof over here versus 124.6 proof over here. I think that's going to be the deciding factor. And when I started this competition, I actually did a live a couple of weeks ago, and I asked, what's the best way to actually pair these up? Should we do lowest proof versus second lowest proof? Should we do lowest proof versus highest proof? This actually worked out where it's the highest proof versus the second highest proof that we have. I didn't do that on purpose. We picked these out of a hat. So if you have a better way that we can match these up and not tell, I really think at 142 proof, we're going to be able to pick out the Jack Daniels no matter what we're drinking on this side. We just happen to go up against the second highest proof that we have. So let's try this out. Everybody knows. Time for the traditional sip. Cheers. Whew. That's hot. That definitely had a kick to it, and we haven't drank this second one yet, but I'm almost I'm almost leaning already towards Zach's Jack Daniels Coy Hill. I don't know what difference this is going to be as far as flavor, because again, this being sourced from Tennessee, it could very well be Jack Daniels. Now I'm not exactly sure. I don't think it's Dickel that it would be from Tennessee. I don't know if there's any other distilleries in Tennessee that we're missing or that it might be sourced from, but if this is another Jack Daniels sourced product, then who knows how different these will actually be and if the proof is the only thing that we're going to get. So let's drink glass number two. We're doing this strictly. These are blind. We put these in blacked out glasses because people got mad at me and they were, I did Woodford Reserve double oaked versus uh, Jim Beam double oaked and people were like, you can tell the difference. Look at the color. And to be honest with you, again, I've mentioned this before with the lighting that I use for the YouTube videos to make it look a little bit better because I'm ugly. We can't see as easily as you can. I have to hold these up in the, in the light and everything to see the color difference. So we just, we got rid of it all together. Blacked out glasses. Can't tell the color difference between anything. Let's get into glass number two. One hundred percent. That's the heaven's door. That's the Jack Daniels. And if it's not that way, that's the best Jack Daniels could ever do for one hundred and forty some proof. And that's not that good for a heaven's door one hundred and twenty four proof. I'm interested to see, though, the tasting notes on this more than just the proof. If you can work past the proof on Jack Daniels, you really get into some good flavor profiles. This one over here is absolutely delicious. But let me take another sip of this now that we've had two sips of high proof alcohol to see if we got rid of a little bit of that ethanol and can get into that flavor profile. I get a lot of sweetness on the nose on this, which again makes me feel excited about once I can get past that ethanol kick because that really means it's going to bring out those vanillas, those caramels, those brown sugars. The uh, Jack Daniels is known for like bananas. I never got bananas on this particular one. I got more cherries when I drank, drank this originally. So I'm going to see if we can pull that off of either one of these. But again, possibly being from the same distillery, who knows what I'm getting. Definitely pulled that ethanol kick down on the third sip here. One, two, three. Second sip on this one. But it's absolutely fantastic when it comes to the flavor profile. And when I first drank this, I didn't appreciate this. I gave this a score on drinkability that was very low. I gave it a taste score that was average because I couldn't quite get past the ethanol kick on this. 
Now that I drink a couple other high proof bourbons with it, which is something that I did during our 2021 Whiskey of the Year results, this did a lot better during the 2021 Whiskey of the Year blind than it did when it was straight up verse itself because I think in my mind I had the proof involved there. I didn't know. I didn't drink anything else. So it was just drinking this at 140 some proof and it was just way too much ethanol kick for me at the time. But now again, letting it air out, letting it open up, letting it sit for a while and also having another 124 proof bourbon to balance it out. It's absolutely fantastic flavor profile wise. And again, this is all under the assumption that this is the Jack Daniels Coy Hill and this is the Heaven's Door. We're not positive about that yet. We haven't gotten to our answer key. But again, just the ethanol kick on this alone, you can almost tell while it's what, 20 some proof difference at most, it's absolutely there and it's not a bad thing. It's not saying Jack Daniels is worse. It's just saying it's higher proof. The crazy part about both of these is the nose on these is absolutely identical to me. You get sweetness. The only thing that's missing is the ethanol kick on this, this glass over here compared to this glass over here. But I don't, can somebody please let me know, is Heaven's Door sourcing from Jack Daniels? I wouldn't be surprised. I know Jack Daniels does source some. Is it Dickel? Is it Daniels? I don't know. This literally smells like the younger version of this. This is nine years old. This is not age stated, I believe. This literally smells like the, like you took this and just watered it down to 120 some proof. It's absolutely fantastic, both of these on flavors. This just is just, this punches you in the face. Once you get past the ethanol kick on this, you're getting punched in the face with cherry, the vanilla, the caramel brown sugar. And the other thing that I'm getting on this glass over here that I'm not getting on this glass over here as much is the oak and the leather. And that usually lends itself to the age behind something when you start to pick out these, these oak notes. I still get them over here, but they're more prevalent over here. And I think they're a little bit more well-balanced over here as well. And again, if these are both Jack Daniels and this is like a five-year and this is a nine-year, that makes perfect sense. If this isn't Jack Daniels, and I'm sure a lot of you know more than I do, then it, I don't know, maybe I like George Dickel if this is Dickel. But this is really, really good. And it honestly tastes like the little brother of whatever I'm drinking over here which makes me very excited that these ended up next to each other or at least in this round one of this particular blind. So here's the deal that we always ask on our actual channel. We do price, taste, drinkability. We gotta take price out of the equation because we technically don't know which one's which. We're gonna take drinkability out of the equation as well just because we don't technically know which one is 124 proof and which one is 142 proof. So we're going on taste alone on this. And here's the deal. This, while the ethanol profile is definitely much hotter compared to this one over here, once you get past that, the flavor profile is much more abundant than the one over here. And that's crazy to think because the flavors on this are fantastic. If this was going up against itself, if this was alone, I would tell you how good of a bourbon this is and how much that I love it flavor wise. But going up against this, again, I always talk about what I would sacrifice for flavor. How much proof would I sacrifice? Would you rather an 80 proof with no with great drinkability and no flavor, or would you rather 150 proof with fantastic, the best flavor you ever had, but you're going to get that ethanol kick to be part of it? Now, it's tough because you've got to kind of weigh it, checks and balances, right? How much ethanol kick versus how much flavor. If you ask me, both have ethanol kick, both have flavor. The ethanol kick on this is definitely higher than this. But the flavor on this is just so much more in your face and more abundant than the one on this when you drink these side to side. And again, I haven't told you this yet, but we have a Patreon giveaway where we're giving away one sample of one two ounce sample of all eight of these bottles in my collection. Go check me out on Patreon. That link is in the description below. They're going to literally get this exact bracket that I'm doing so they can try and recreate this. Maybe they'll put them blind against each other. Maybe they won't. They can do whatever they want with them. But it will be exciting to see what somebody else thinks when they put these two particular single barrels next to each other. This is tough, but we've talked about it before. I'm not going to sacrifice proof for flavor, so we're going to give it to this glass over here on the right side. Again, I'm going to guess that this is the Jack Daniels Coy Hill. It's not really fair when it comes to proof on these two. You can tell me whatever you want about blacked out glasses, whether I could or could not see the actual color of the whiskey. This is Jack Daniels Coy Hill. This is the Heaven's Door. Both fantastic pickups. This coming out of Banesh Liquors. This is in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. This is their store pick. I've talked to the owner about it. They do fantastic store picks. If you're in the Philadelphia, the Pennsylvania, the New Jersey, any of this eastern Pennsylvania area, and you can get across the state line to New Jersey, and you can go to Banesh Liquors, check them out. They have 
literally like 50 store picks sitting on a table when you walk in the door. Absolutely fantastic. Haven't had one yet that I don't like. This one obviously is a single barrel. I found this at 3.30 online on the Fine Wine and Good, Good Spirits website. I got lucky. But here's the answer key, folks. Green is Jack Daniels Koi Hill. This is our green one over here. It's just that proof is just too obvious to tell. But at the same time, you're really not missing out on too much. If you couldn't, this is a great, uh, great pickup, by the way. If you couldn't get your hands on this Jack Daniels Koi Hill, go out and buy this Heaven's Door single barrel. Again, you'll probably get a different single barrel than I do. I can tell you right now, this is Warehouse WS, uh, Rick Level T, Cooperage Kelvin, Char Number 4, Toast Medium Plus. I'll put this all in the video, maybe. I don't know if I have time to get to that. But again, Panache Liquor Store Pick, even if you can get another Heaven's Door single barrel cash strength bourbon, definitely get it if you couldn't get your hands on the. They're very similar. If you couldn't get your hands on the Koi Hill, they're very similar. You're not going to be mad at all. But listen, Jack Daniels is going to take round one. We have Blanton's versus Evan Williams coming up on round two on the 10th. Make sure you click that like. Make sure you click that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you can be notified when all of these drop. Make sure you check me out on Instagram at Bourbon of the Week. I do a lot of voting on these. You can go on, try and guess which one's going to win. We're going to pick a couple of winners at the end, send some custom Glen Karen, some t-shirts, some hoodies to you guys. If you're not already following me or joining me on Discord, come join our Discord. We've got a bunch of people that chat 24-7 about bourbon. Whether you're new, whether you're experienced, we literally have it all. I still consider myself new when it comes to this bourbon world. I'm like three years into this. There's people that are doing this for 20 plus years, longer than I've been alive. We've got a bunch of bourbons on our collection behind me that we review all the time and give you my personal opinion on. Also, Patreon, we talked about it before. We're doing an eight sample giveaway for our Patreon. You have to be part of the Patreon to be part of that. So go click that link in the description and join the Patreon. As for everything else, though, please don't drink and drive. Drink responsibly and stay healthy, stay happy, stay drinking. Cheers, y'all. Not that hot now. I don't like these black glasses because I feel like I can't see how much I'm pouring. So Chris is getting a little drunk tonight. Not that that makes it different from any other night.